So, welcome to my presentation about the MBS FileMaker plugin. I'm already uh, programming for nearly 20 years, and 10 years, over 10 years ago, I started writing a FileMaker plugin. Over the time, we got over 4,000 functions, and this year, we already have 140 new functions. And as we have over 450 examples now, you need at least nine days if you get 50 per day done. <laughs> Uh, one of the decisions we made 10 years ago was to just have one plugin file. This makes installation and updates very easy and convenient. Other people did decide to make 20 different plugins, but that's a lot of work for them, and I don't want that work. <laughs> I just put one file on the, on the web, and you can download it. You can install it on all the FileMaker versions uh, on Windows from 7, on Mac from 8.5 towards the latest uh, 15, and uh, it already runs in 16, if you get a chance to test the better version. You can use it on, on Mac, Windows, and Linux. So we do support the cloud co computing. You can use it on FileMaker Pro, Advanced, Server, Cloud, Custom Web Publishing, WebDirect, and Runtimes. So, for the new FileMaker Cloud, you use the Linux version, and for the iOS SDK, there should be soon an update coming from FileMaker, which supports loading plugins. So, at that point, the plugin may finally run on the iPhone. Yeah. Yeah, actually, uh, since, when was it, maybe September last year, I already have the plugin ready. <laughs> it's waiting. Every day, FileMaker can decide to put it on the website, make it public. <laughs> so, um, we, we decided, instead of filling the, the calculation dialog with hundreds of functions, or now thousands, we decided to make uh, one function, and the first name uh, the first parameter to the function is the function name you want to call. And this function name can come from a calculation or from a field. So some people, instead of writing scripts, they write, they write records in a database, and then they can loop over the records and execute all the commands stored there. Or if you, have, um, if you use the picture functions, you can uh, store the name of an effect in, in, in a pop-up menu, and then select something there, and use that name to uh, as a function. A function. Mm -hmm. So if you if you want to check for an error, there is a function is error, which tells you if the last function call was returning an error. This is much better than checking the return value, because sometimes the return value may uh, may be not so clear if it's an error or not, but this flag will tell you. And we have a lot of reference parameters, which means you can create an object like a SQL connection, and you get back a number, and then you can use uh, this SQL connection by specifying the number for other calls. So usually you just uh, can't use one call to the plugin, you need a lot of calls, because each of the functions does a little thing, and you reference the objects with with IDs, and you can have several objects, usually. So on a server, they can can be running a server script for five users at the same time, and all talk to different SQL databases, for example, or different curl connections. Yeah. And I want to give you an overview. I don't want to name all the functions. Let's go. Oh could take a little bit. So, so let's talk about uh, curl, for example. So if you need anything with HTTP, FTP, SFTP transfers, you can uh, download uh, files via FTP or upload them. You can do all kinds of HTTP transfers. We support a lot of options for SSL encryption, for proxies, so if you need to go through a proxy for FTP or HTTP, we can do that. 
We have a lot of authentication functions, so you can pass in a password and a username or provide a Kerberos login. You can even use uh, with SSH, you can use uh, a client side certificate, like a private key to authenticate. We can uh, do transfer synchronously, so your script is waiting for the transfer to finish. Or we can run them asynchron asynchronously, so you get a script triggered when the transfer is done. Or we can even run them on a preemptive thread in the background, so whatever FileMaker does doesn't stop the upload or the download. And we can use that to do parallel transfers, which is a really nice way to get those uploads, downloads going faster. Because FileMaker can't block them by showing a dialog. And you can run several transfers parallel, and this can um, use uh, the bandwidth much better. We can do all kinds of custom requests. So if you have a HTTP request and you want to, um, instead of using POST or PUT, you want to have a custom request. Or if you have a custom request for FTP, for example, to rename a file, you can do that. So we can delete, rename files on FTP. We can, of course, uh, move files, change permissions, whatever. Because with custom requests, we can send all commands to the server, whatever you want. Questions? We can, of course, also use web services. So FileMaker has an insert from a URL command, which a lot of people use, but it has a few limits. So we can pass custom HTTP headers with our plugin. We can use all the HTTPS with TLS in the latest version. We have a lot of JSON and XML functions, so you can create JSON with the plugin. You can pass JSON. You can also um, work with XML, so you can build all those requests for your SOAP or REST web service. And if you have to just submit a form without a web viewer, you can use our form functions. And we can send emails with more than one attachment. Yeah, And we can do HTML or plain text or both, and we can include uh, graphics in the HTML, which show at a certain position, or can show your logo in your HTML emails. Uh, all the text is probably encoded because, well, I'm living in Germany, we have umlauts, um, so we take care about that. We also have an example for batch emailing, and there's one which does parallel sending and reusing connections. So instead of having a script loop over all the email addresses and sends one email at a time, we can send up, in this example, up to eight emails in parallel which makes the email sending about five times faster, because while FileMaker script prepares the next email, we can already s deliver a few other emails. This uh, email, email connections require several uh, packages sent to the server, well, sent one to login, sent one to, to the SSL, and so on. So it takes a while to send an email, and while we discuss with the server about our login, we can already deliver the data for another email and prepare the next one. So this goes quick. We can also receive emails using IMAP or POP3 servers. We can pass the email and ex extract the content, like subjects, recipients, or the text is probably encoded, so you get your umlauts back when you receive them. We can save the attachments to files or containers. We can even send custom requests. For example, there's an example which also supports deleting the emails. And usually I uh, automate things by sending the emails to a special account, which is only uh, queried by the script. So the script can always check is there an email, download the first email, process it, delete the email, then look for the next email. And we can also detect duplicates because sometimes, well, we get emails twice. And we have a lot of PDF functions. So we support both PDF Kit from Mac, which is a framework from Apple, 
and so it supports only the features Apple implemented. And we support Dyna PDF, which is a cross-platform PDF library made by Jens Poscholte in Germany. And it's an extra license, but it works cross-platform and uh, brings a lot of PDF functionality to Windows. <coughs> No, we have one. <laughs> well, not, not the developers, but yeah. one stranger is Windows. Yeah. yeah. But well, FileMaker is an Apple company, so. So, well, with both PDF Kit and Dyna PDF, we can uh, merge PDFs and split PDFs. So, if you have um, make your invoice in FileMaker, you can attach another PDF page like your uh, terms or your an advertisement and send one PDF to the customer. You can also split PDFs, like if you have a document database, you can store each PDF page in, an, in its own record with a text, so you can do a full text search and find only the pages you want. You can run a picture from a page, which is often convenient for WebDirect to show a picture of a page instead of putting the PDF in the container and let the user steal it. Like if you don't want the people to download or print the PDF, you can just show a picture. On Mac we can print with PDF kit and if your printer is a fax machine, we can also pass the number and send a fax. And we can print on Windows with Dyna PDF and for both you can of course set a lot of options like choosing the printer or the paper. And for PDFs, we can of course extract text, so we can store the text. With Dyna PDF, uh, we have a lot of more features. We can create new PDFs, even on the server. We can edit PDFs, like adding page numbers to your PDFs made in FileMaker. We can of course merge PDFs, we can render pictures, we can even render multi-page TIFFs if you want. We can, we can convert existing PDFs to PDFA format, if you need that for archiving. We can include XML in PDF files, which is used in Germany for the Zugfert st standard for invoicing. And if you have a client who requires that, you can do it with a plugin. We can uh, create form fields, we can also set and query the values, so you can create a PDF with, with a form, Prefill it with, for example, existing customer data sent to the customer. If the customer corrects his data, you can get it back and query the, the field values. You can extract all the images in the PDF and uh, text in an area, which is uh, sometimes convenient. If you need to, if you know that uh, your invoice has always the invoice number in a certain area, you can automatically just get this number. We can also encrypt or decrypt PDFs and protect them with a password or forbid printing. We can find text and highlight it, so we can show you where on the page the text was found. We can also find and replace text, so if you have PDFs with a little placeholder, you can just replace the text with your value. We can do our own layouting on PDFs uh, using uh, tables. We can work with annotations, we can add them, we can flatten them so they can't be edited anymore. We can add links to your PDF pages, so you have clickable areas which bring you to a website or a different page. And we can digitally sign PDF, page, uh, PDF files, so you can later prove that the PDF was not modified. And we can optimize PDF files. So if you get a PDF with uh, maybe a little error inside, like you made a PDF with FileMaker and had a and FileMaker created a broken PDF file, you can fix that. We can also scale down the images. So if someone dropped a 20 megapixel picture into a container and you printed it to PDF with FileMaker, you get a nice 500 dpi image. You can reduce that to maybe 150 dpi and send via email, a smaller PDF. We can also convert all the existing pictures to JPEG to make the PDF smaller. 
We can detect duplicate fonts or images in a PDF, like if you merge two PDFs and they use the same fonts and same images, we can replace those with references to and store only one copy. And we can remove private data, like all this data InDesign uses to edit the PDF. All those things make the PDF much smaller. We can use style text in a PDF. So if you have style text, we can wipe that on a PDF page. And we support a lot of encryption functions. So far, no questions. OK. So if you need elliptic curve digital signature, we have that. If you need RSI encryption or signatures, we can do that too. AES with uh, several bit rates, Blowfish, RC2, RC4. And you can encrypt your containers or your files or your texts and some people just encrypt things on one side, send them over an email, and then decrypt on the other side. Or with a web service, we had to upload the data and a digital signature, so the web service can check if the file was modified on the transfer. So sometimes you need it. And sometimes you also need hashes. So we can do all the different hashes, like a secure hash with 512 bit. We can also do the HMIC, uh, HMIC and uh, PBKDF2. Uh, we, we implemented it for several web servers, which needed for the authentication to log in. So we had to hash the password with uh, a certain rule, and uh, then send the hash, and clearly uh, define that we are the right one to log in. And the plugin provides data structures. So we have global variables which are independent of a database. If you use them on a server, one client can set them, the other one can query them. We can also use dictionaries, which is a key value associative array. So you can store values there and query them. And as it's stored in memory with an index, it's quicker than any database lookup. You can, for example, <coughs> load all your zip codes into a dictionary and later look up. Or you can use UIDs for your records, and then you can store in the dictionary the UID as key and as value some text describing the record, like the name of a person or the name of a building. And then wherever you have a UID, you can quickly look up what's inside this UID. We also provide quick list, uh, which allows you to store lists in memory with index and access them very quickly or edit them, because those list functions in FileMaker always pass the whole list as a block of text. And so they have to pass the list each time you, you call a function. Um, this can be very slow for big lists. And we can work with Word files. So you can open a Word file, you can extract the text, you can replace a placeholder with an actual value. If, if you need, you can add rows to tables, and we use that with a client to uh, create their invoices. They use an older plugin, which is no longer supported. So they can open an existing Word file as a template, they can fill in the invoice number, the customer name, and then they can add as many rows as they need at the the items to the invoice, and then save it to a Word file, because they need a Word file, because those employees will review those invoices and maybe add a few notes here and there, and then send the invoice. Oh. We have um, video recording and audio recording. So if you want to take a, a little video or audio recording, you can do that. You can select the devices and uh, show a preview on your layout, and then the user can maybe show something, like here, take a picture of your um, serial number of, of your iPhone, hold it in front of the camera, take a picture, run it through our OCR functions, and get the number. And we have clipboard functions, which 
work without a field. So we can get HTML, RTF style text on the clipboard or from the clipboard. Like if the user selects something on, on Safari, copies the text and we can paste it in FileMaker. We can also query which uh, file passes are on the, on the clipboard or put files on the clipboard as well as pictures. And we can work with all the FileMaker XML data formats. Like if you copy a script in FileMaker, we can get you the XML FileMaker puts on the clipboard. You can store it and later if you want to paste it again, you can restore it to the clipboard. And some people made um, little snippet databases with, with pre-made scripts or custom functions, which they can just copy to FileMaker. <coughs> We can, on Mac, work with the address book. So we can access the context database on the Mac. You can fill in uh, contacts, like export all your customers into a new group. And then when a customer is calling you, you see the name on, the, on your iPhone. You can, of course, synchronize it to Exchange or Google or whatever service you need. You can uh, search for contacts, like if you get a phone call and you have the phone number, you can automatically look up the entry in the address book. And you can open any person uh, for editing in the address book directly. But those are only for Mac, because Mac has a standard API for the address book, which is not existing on Windows. Yeah? Is it also available in the next uh, iOS? Uh, could be. <laughs> now the thing is um, while I, I compiled the plugin for iOS with I think already over 2000 functions enabled uh, there's not yet a few, uh, not yet many people to test it and uh, I have not seen a lot of wishes for features so at some point FileMaker may release an updated SDK, then you can download it and you can play with the plugin and send me all your wishes and bug reports. So we have a, a couple of utility functions, like on a Mac, your, your solution has a dock icon which can show any picture you want. You can also change the name of the application in the menu bar. On Windows, you can also change the title of the FileMaker window and, and the picture, so the little icon there. So it doesn't need to say FileMaker, it can say your name. <coughs> As you may know, FileMaker has a speak command in the scripts, uh, script command, which can be used a couple of times before it um, produces a problem. And we have a speak command which works on Mac and Windows. And you can select the voice. And for text, you can measure the width of a text with a certain font, which allows you to decide on your layouts if a text fits at runtime. And some people use it to, well, measure mm, too long, make it a little bit shorter, and a few dots, measure again oh, too, too long, make it a little more shorter. And so you can show the text to fill a certain space exactly. You can disable AppNap on Mac, uh, which is a feature from Apple to save battery by pausing your application in the background. And you can define, uh, uh, you can tell the system <coughs> that you're doing important work, like doing a backup, and that you don't want to sleep. <laughs> you can detect right mouse click. So if someone clicks a button, you can ask the plugin, is that a left mouse or a right mouse click? And this way, show, for example, on the right click a context menu, and on the left click do something, <coughs> default action. And we can automatically um, generate database design reports. So some people uh, have scripts which at each evening automatically start a process where they will generate the DDR and store it on a certain folder, which is then used with version tracking. So they can see over the several months all the changes to their uh, databases. Measuring the text, could you also measure the number of lines? Uh, now the problem is um, FileMaker has their own text system 
So when I measure the width, I ask the operation system how much space the operation system would need to draw the text. But FileMaker draws on its own, so it's it's already not very perfect. It's it's a close match, but uh, I, I don't know how much space FileMaker is using for the lines, so I can't calculate that. There are a lot of uh, style information in FileMaker which is not available to the plugins. Like, uh, we will come later, um, I don't get, for example, the alignment. So, you saw the me uh, putting style text on a PDF, but this doesn't work with alignment because FileMaker doesn't tell me the alignment. Yeah. I would love to measure the high, but currently you can only use a trick, which I think is... Um, using a script trigger when the field is edited, so you can query the high of the field yeah. while it's open and then see if that's higher than the normal high. Uh, yeah. So, next. SQL. We can do inserts, deletes, or updates with records without switching the layout. In any open file, so you have one file open, you press a button, and you can insert a record in a different file, in a different table. You can update records, so you can say, plugin, this file name, this table name, this field name should be this value, and you find the record by using this ID file field with, with this record ID. And all our SQL functions preserve the data type. So if you put, a, if you if you select a SQL, a container and put it in a different field, it will stay a container and not be converted to text in between. This is also important for dates and times, because converting a timestamp to text and then parsing it back uh, with, well, creating the text using US format and then parsing as Dutch format <laughs> could cause trouble. You can also insert records from a query. So you can run a SQL query in one table, select some records, and then insert those into a different table, even in a different file. This allows you very efficiently to copy data, and we preserve the data type, and the field names don't need to match. So you can uh, make a select here and insert there and use different field names on both sides. And if you have a text with tab return delimiters, we can directly fill them into records. Yeah. Well, the new SQL table was very choosy about the way your format comes in. So when you when you set a container and name in the text field, uh, that will remain a container, you say? No, no. Uh, we select in one table a container field, get the container value, and put it in a different container in a different field. Okay, so it's still, it's contained. So, if you use a SQL execute in, in FileMaker, the built-in, it will always give you text. Mm -hmm. So, your type is lost. Okay, yeah. So, we can also talk to other databases, and I have a long list of supported databases, which you can access using native drivers and independent from the built-in ESS in FileMaker. So, instead of installing some ODBC adapters, drivers, whatever, you can directly load the client libraries for the database, connect, do your SQL commands, query records, do your inserts. And I have quite a few customers which use that. For example, if you have a web shop with a MySQL database, you can connect every night and do your queries to find the new orders and download them, or upload your products. And we have a few copy functions to do a select on one database, for example, in FileMaker, and then do inserts in the foreign database or the other way around. So this copy process can be a one-line call to the plugin. Schedules. We can run scripts by name. So you can provide the name of a script in a variable. We can schedule the start of a script the execution of a SQL command or an evo expression evaluation in some time, like in five minutes, at a time, like every day at three o'clock, at a timestamp, like next week, three o'clock, or when the user is idle. 
For example, if the user is editing a field and leaves the computer, we can detect that he's left and well, exit the field or log out. We can also run things at times like well, make a DDR every night, <laughs> whatever. We have a lot of file functions. Simple things like copying or moving files, renaming, deleting, creating folders. We can query file information like uh, the tags, size, dates, comments. We can automatically uh, mount network volumes, especially on the server. This is often an issue because on the FileMaker server on the Mac, um, the FileMaker server runs on with its own user account. Well, same on Windows. If the admin logs in on the machine and just mounts the disk, it's mounted for him, not for the server process. So the FileMaker server can mount with the plugin his own network share and can then, uh, for example, copy backup files to network share and then unmount. We can also query disk information like the free disk space. So you can send yourself an email if the disk is full. Yeah, Windows, yeah, older. yeah, sure. Everything on Windows too. And we can check if a file is in use, which allows us on the FileMaker server to detect if the database is open. So we can copy only the closed files <laughs> or the backup files. But for some customers, we have uh, that FileMaker creates a, a hourly or every five minutes a backup to a certain folder. We uh, then, for example, copy those files to a network share or to a Dropbox folder to have uh, history over, over time and backups forever. Uh, next, we can define hotkeys. So you can define that a certain key combination, like pressing the one of the F keys, uh, triggers a certain script. FileMaker doesn't need to be the front application. FileMaker can be in the background. So I have a customer which is using a script for me and he has the Apple Mail application. Then he sees a certain email and says, oh, I need to get this in FileMaker. He presses a key. Then FileMaker will run a script um, using one of my example codes to get email text from Apple Mail. And then FileMaker gets the text of the email and can see what's in the email and process it by, for example, creating a record in a certain table. can do a lot of automation using all those uh, well getting a key and we can also we can also do remote control so we can move the mouse by script or we can press keys so you can bring another application to the front or do certain clicks for the user to automate things we also support the touch bar so if you get one of those new Macs um, one two three um, you can uh, define touch bar commands and you can use those in FileMaker yourself. So I have an example which creates a button for showing hiding the debugger or the data viewer. So you can make your life in FileMaker easier. You can also use it on all your solutions to quickly navigate, for example. And you can have uh, custom touch bars for each of your layouts. So you can switch them whenever you change a layout. But it's of course only available on the latest MacOS version. Yeah. And we have import functions for JSON and XML. So if someone gives you an XML file with, for example, a quarter million addresses and you say, I don't want to write the XLSD, I don't want to write code to pass it, you can pass it to the plugin. The plugin will automatically create all the tables for the records in the XML or JSON file to create the fields, it will import all the data, and then you can build layouts to show the data or scripts to process it. And I do have customers which have to import XML files regularly, so they once use this to create the tables. They created scripts to look up data in, in the imported records, and 
when they get a new XML file and the new XML file has a new field, it will automatically be added. So if they discover after a year that they have a new field and they need to add it to the layout, they can do that. And the values for the last year are already there. Magic. <laughs> yeah. As you may have noticed, the plugin has functions to create fields on the fly, and you can also use that for updating solutions. <laughs> it's limited, but it's it's quite nice to just create fields on the fly. So we can use a web viewer. We can, of course, run JavaScript in the web viewer, and this gives a lot of possibilities. You can query the current HTML and text, so you don't just like the FileMaker function gives you the HTML it loaded originally, but we can give you live the current HTML showing in the web viewer or the text. So you can extract whatever value is on, on this HTML. We can fill form fields. So if you go to the same websites again and again and you have to enter the same values from your records, for example, if you go automatically to an order page and you have always to fill in your billing address or your customer address, you can maybe add a button to automatically fill that for you. We can read all the text on a page. We can read um, links or images. So if you know on a certain page there's a certain text in a certain area, you can extract that. Or you can download images there. Yeah. So I have a customer, for example, if, if he gets a call from a, from a client, he will try to look up this client on LinkedIn web page and automatically copy the contact information to his uh, database so he can remember the customer. We can print a web viewer and on Mac we can even print to PDF or we can get an image of, of the web viewer on Mac and Windows. And we have TCP IP sockets and UDP sockets. So if you have some device where you can talk to over the network, you can do that with a plugin. You can have script triggers for incoming data. For UDP, we can send broadcast messages. So I can send a message to all computers in the network, pass in some text and implement a chat feature, like calling everyone for lunch. Or you can include commands and have your script decide if it's for this computer. Like this way you can send commands to any computer, to a certain computer. And this computer can then see, oh, that's my ID. So this message is for me and I can do something. We also have server sockets for incoming connections. And we have a bridge there to, so you can enable HTTP and you can use Inset from URL on an iPad to trigger a script on a FileMaker Pro. And we implemented this for one customer who needed to print on demand. So on the iPad, they create an order and then you can press a button which triggers a script on a different FileMaker computer, a different computer with FileMaker. We'll go to the same records issue the print command and it will print to the printer next to the iPad. Yes. You can build crazy stuff. <laughs> um, we support IPv6 and v4, but usually the local networks all are IPv4. And optionally we allow you to use SSL. Oops. <coughs> and we have serial ports. So if you have a device, usually for most customers it's actually a scale. You have a scale, you want to get the weight of something. Um, you can usually talk to the scale over TCP or a serial port. Send a <coughs> command there to, to request the current weight. Um, get back some data, Well, put it in the database. It also works fine with a lot of USB to serial adapters. You can also trigger a script for incoming data, so you can uh, don't need to wait. You can just have the script be triggered if something is, is put on a scale. We support a uh, normal uh, block-based reading, but also we can read lines. So if you know your data is coming with a, a new line character as a termini, as a end of a message, you can say read one line at a time. 
We support configuration of, well, all the important things like data bits, stop bits, parity. We also allow you to configure whether to use DTR, DSR, or the various ways to detect whether there is a, something coming or not. And we can use the calendar database on the Mac to query, create, edit calendar events or reminders. We can ask the user to, for permissions to actually be allowed to do that. We can add alarms and recurrence rules. You can synchronize it to your iPhone, to Google, to Exchange, whatever. And we have two APIs actually. The older framework is for Mac on for 32-bit and 64-bit, and Apple added a newer framework which we can also use for iOS and 64-bit. So your choice. Um, I do have a customer which uses those, this functionality to have a to-do list in FileMaker. This to-do list is then synchronized to a calendar which is synchronized to the iPhones. On the iPhone they can say complete and type in the command the time they need it. This is synchronized back and then this to-do list is marked in FileMaker as being done and the time is not there for billing. So you can sync back and forward. It's up to you to implement, but we have a few examples. So is this a text in in the calendar that this uh, that this user is making that is? Yeah, there's a note field, All right. which you see in your in your uh, on your iPhone. So you can enter something there, and we made the decision if if the text there is starting uh, with a certain character. Uh, there's a number following. We will use this number as a time in minutes. That's a convention we decided for this customer. And I have quite a few customers using it to synchronize uh, calendar events. So usually the company has one Mac somewhere which does all this calendar stuff. And they usually have uh, their calendars on, on a Google server, on, on Exchange or whatever. And then all the ca calendars for all the all the employers are synchronized to this computer. So this computer has maybe 50 calendars. And then he can put the event on the right calendar and each each employer gets his events synchronized. But I believe the, 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 the calendars uh, should, should uh, use Kaldo. Yeah. Kaldo protocol. Yeah, well. That's the, any, any calendar that uses that. Yeah, any word. calendar you can subscribe to in the Apple calendar application can be used. So, so a Gmail calendar, calendar would work fine as well. Yes. Should work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I had no complaints about that. So, I would expect it works fine for everyone. So, for printing, if you still print, we can list you the printers on a computer. We can control the print dialog on a Mac, and for example, redirect the printing to a certain printer or print to PDF. We can also run the print command on Windows for you and select options in the dialog. So you can use the plugin to print to a certain printer, use a certain paper, use a certain paper tray. Options like uh, page range or color or black and white or stuff like this. So finally you can control the printer in FileMaker. <laughs> we can also use scanners flatbed and document feeders. So I do have customers which have solutions. They put a stack of paper on the document feeder. FileMaker will automatically ask the scanner every minute for new stuff to scan. Will automatically scan. Will make a picture of each page. Put it in a record. Use our OCR feature in the plugin to detect text. Put the text in a field for the full text search. And if you want, you can also create a PDF with the picture and put the text on top so you have a searchable PDF with the text. Uh, usually you make the text invisible for this. And then you can search the text by still seeing the scan. We have several APIs for um, scanning. So we have Image Capture, which is Apple's uh, latest framework to do scanning. And we can talk to all the scanners available in the digital image application from Apple. So every scanner works. 
which is fine with me. We can use Windows Image Equation on Windows to talk to all VR driven scanners there. So your scanner needs actually a Windows system driver and not a custom application. So be sure to install the VR driver. Uh, driver. We also support still the Twain, so that's for older. Twain drivers are getting, um, well, it's getting hard to get Twain drivers, but we still support it for because some users still use it. But it's not working well for 64-bit in most cases, but can work. You can scan with or without a dialog, so you can present a dialog to for the user to select the scanner. You can present a dialog to scan, where the user can do all the options, or you do the options in, in your script. Like defining the resolution or defining the area to scan. Sorry, the uh, OCM, is it, um, is it your own algorithm that you have? Uh, it's a Tesseract engine, which is an open source uh, OCR engine, which I use. Uh, it can be trained with a lot of uh, languages, and I include a few language files with the plugin. So, right. it's working fine for a lot of people. Thank you. Uh, you should uh, always have a resolution of at least 150 dpi for OCR. Yeah, not of course. People write me emails, it doesn't work, and then I tell them, yeah, your picture is bad. <laughs> yeah. Often I just uh, scale up the picture and then it works. So even if you have a low-res picture, you can scale it up. And because um, the Tesseract engine expects a minimum text size, and if your picture is too small, it, it doesn't recognize the text. So next we have a few more utility functions, like you can qu query the Windows Management Instrumentation Database, which allows you to, s to see what events happened on a Windows machine, what virus software is installed, what processor, what CPU, what disk, what serial ports, whatever. All the system information is available there. We can zip files and unzip files automatically. So if you want to email a zip archive of some text files regularly, you can do that with a plugin. Oh, the text with is double, duplicate. Okay. But we can uh, send and uh, receive notifications, uh, system wide notifications, like uh, if the user switches the screen resolution, we can get that notification. We can also send notifications, so you can have, uh, for example, a command line app uh, to do some work and send a notification when it's done. And you can receive that. And we can do SSH uh, login to other computers and run commands. And we can use Java. And this is for any Java version you want. Because the plugin doesn't care for a specific version, it just loads Java. It allows you to load uh, a jar file. So you can um, use all the classes defined in this Java archive and create objects, and set properties, query properties, call methods, and all the data types for the parameters are automatically translated. And this can be used to interface existing code in Java, yeah, and use it in FileMaker, within the same process. I have a few customers which got Java code from the banks, which then, which is just an interface to talk to the server, but you don't get the interface directly, you have to use the Java code. So, Next, file system events. So you can monitor a folder for changes and get a script called when someone puts a file there or renames something, deletes a file. We have the directory watcher, which is brand new for version 7.1. I made it last week. <laughs> and we have FS events for Mac for some time now. On Mac, it's uh, actually a system database, so we can even query for changes in, in the time your application didn't run, in the history. <coughs> we also have menu commands. So you can show a context to a menu in FileMaker and use submenus, font styles, icons, colors, whatever. 
You can also uh, use this to do navigation in your solution. Like some people have a navigation button on each layout, which shows a context menu to go to different layouts. Or you use it as a context menu yeah, on your buttons, on your controls. You can, uh, when the user, you can have your script wait for the user to select something, get back which item was selected. Or you can have it trigger a script or do an uh, evaluation uh, when, when you click something. Oh, this is the layout. Yeah. Okay. So, something changed. So, FileMaker um, <coughs> uses, our, on the operation system level, FileMaker uses always a list, even if it's showing just one record as a, well, as a record. So you always have this bouncing scrolling. And you can disable it with the plugin if you want. Next we have a rule-based coloring for calculation and scripts for our Mac users. Because on the Mac, FileMaker uses standard system controls where I can um, well, get callbacks for FileMaker drawing. Uh, calculation or scripts lines, and on Windows I can't get into it. Sorry. Oh, the Windows guy left. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have context menus in the script editor, so we can use context menu there. We can highlight blocks, we can search in a relationship graph, we can search a script or go to certain lines, and for FileMaker 11 and 12, the plugin also adds a line numbers. So here's the block highlighting, so if you click on an if, you see which else or end if belongs to this if line. While well, FileMaker copied a few of my coloring ideas, I have yet to copy this. So, and the context menu, um, okay, the picture is in German, but you see there is a command to copy tables, so you can click, for example, on your, on your list of fields or tables, and you could copy that list. You can uh, also copy other lists. You can click on a line and choose activate or deactivate to activate or deactivate a line just where you are. I hate it to move the mouse up to the menu <laughs> for, for just deactivating a line. Copy paste is also available there. And if you click on a line to execute a script, you can also jump right to this script with the context menu. This even works if the line is commented out. And now a few things which are new this year. So for PDF, we got a few new options to print PDFs with showing a printer dialog. So the user can make changes to the setup and we can save the settings and later restore it yeah, which is very nice. So you can remember which uh, settings the user made. So we can, uh, also new is uh, the functions for doing links. Um, so you can define an area on a PDF page and define it as a target of a link on a different page and make an index of your document. We can rotate templates. So we can import a PDF page as a template and place it on a different page, in a different size, and we can rotate it. Yeah. And we can add annotations, as you may know, and we added the watermark annotation, which allows you to place watermarks as annotations. Of course, we usually normally place just a picture or a text as a watermark, um, because annotations can be edited by the user. But if you want it editable, can you use that? Uh, I have a question about yeah. uh, Dynapedia because there are, um, you need to, 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 to purchase a license. Yes, we sell there Dynapedia are licenses. Certain, uh, types of licenses. Yes. And can you comment on which functionality uh, you need? Well, if you just need to create a PDF, you can go with our starter license. Yeah. If you want to import something from an existing PDF or use encryption, or form fields, you go with the light license. 
And if you want to use all the features, you go with the Pro license. And then you have single page import and rendering of pages. And a few more features, of and course. And the, the feature that you uh, uh, look you can the always the, 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 the placement of, of the text items on PDF. You need to do the light version? Or? Uh, well, if you want to import an existing PDF, you need the light version. Okay. Then you can put page numbers on it or place text, and then you can save it again. Okay. If you want to render a picture of your PDF, you need the Pro version. Is and there, uh, I almost finished, or do we have to... No, we have some more. Um, <laughs> if you just want to create a, an invoice on a FileMaker server using the plugin, you can um, you can use the starter version, except if you want to use an existing PDF as a template for the background, then you need the import feature again. So you can play with the uh, with the plugin without a license, build something, and then decide what you need. So for, we got a couple of XML functions. So you have XML, and you can query a subtree. You can say this node, then this node, then this node, and give me this as XML. You can get the text of an XML node. You can create variables on the fly for nodes in the XML. So you have an XML from a web service. You can create variables for all the values there. You can query attributes and what nodes are available. You can uh, use our plugin to work with certificates, so we all want secure SSL connections, but we may need to know the name from the certificate. We can use the plugin to use this, or we can use P PKCS 12 files and get the private key and the certificates. And we have more little things, like the if you have a container in FileMaker with, for example, a Word file, FileMaker doesn't allow you to drag the Word file to the fin finder. We can allow the file drags like this by uh, intercepting the drag from FileMaker, and FileMaker puts the data on the drag clipboard, but not in the format the finder understands, so we translate it on the fly, and you can drag the file to the finder. Then we can query SQL commands in, in FileMaker and give you the result as CSV or text. So you can easily query well text and export as a CSV file. We can also do batch FTP downloads. Like if you have a folder of images on your FTP server, you can say to the plugin download all files, and then the plugin will get all the files for you into a folder on your local disk. On a web viewer, I discovered on, uh, that, at least on Mac, you can hide the web viewer. So if you just use a web viewer to execute some JavaScript, it doesn't need to be visible to the user. The web viewer still thinks it's visible, but we make sure with the core animation layer that it's not actually drawn on the screen. <laughs> and we have a progress dialog feature, well, to show progress. But you can also have it uh, when the user clicks the cancel button there to get a script triggered. Where's my link? Okay, so we have a website with resources. We have a website where you can watch a few videos. We do have a blog where I regularly show stuff. And that's all. Thanks. Okay. Well, um...